Okay, let's try deriving Newton's equations from the principle of least action. Now, we have our Lagrangian. Before we can proceed, we need to choose our coordinates. Now, we understand Newton's laws most easily in Cartesian coordinates, so we'll pick those. We'll pick our original R. In other words, our X, our Y, and our Z. That's step one. Step two is put our Lagrangian into these coordinates. Well, it happens to no kinetic energy in terms of Cartesian coordinates. It's a half mv squared, so it's a half m x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared. And the potential is going to be some function of x, y, and z. OK, and now I use my Euler-Lagrange equation. Now remember, our Euler-Lagrange equation is ddt. Our coordinates are going to be x, y, z. Let's just do the x version. x dot minus delta l delta x equals 0. And so we have to take the derivative of this with respect to x dot. That doesn't depend on x dot, neither does that or that. So it's just this term, which is going to give us a half m times derivative of x dot squared, which is 2x dot. None of this depends on x, but this does. Uh, don't forget that minus sign and that minus sign are going to add together to give us a plus. And so the half and the two are going to cancel. And we end up with just mx dot. And the derivative of that is, of course, mx double dot. And that's equal to minus delta u delta x which is, of course, just the force in the x-direction. So what we've got here is the first component of Newton's laws. And if we do it for y and for z, uh, then we get uh, the vector equation that's, that's Newton's laws. So going forwards is extremely easy, although going back took us uh, 12 minutes of rather dense algebra and calculus.